it's usually um, pretty good about uh, reconnecting you when it disconnects unexpectedly. Yep. Uh, it didn't even disconnect, I don't think, because I just joined. Oh, I don't know. Yay. I mean, yeah, but when it updates, it usually takes you right back to where you were when you started. Yeah. That's true. Am I, like, the only one who's gotten about 40 Discord updates over, like, the last four minutes? Like, I've gotten, like, every time I've gotten onto my computer, I've gotten, like, I've had a, the Discord update icon popping up over there, like, again? And I don't know. Um, if I don't get one every other day, I'm surprised. Wow. Like, I just noticed that arrow, like, oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. All right, so it's I'm not like, the only one. Yeah, no, Discord updates all the fucking time. Usually there's not even a channel log. So when there's a channel log, I'm a, I'm a little surprised. Right. But yeah, no, no, the Discord's like all the fucking time updating. All right, so I, I feel a little bit better. I'm sitting there thinking like, because like, you remember when I had um, when I had that older SSD in here, uh, I couldn't update things like uh, Razer Synapse or uh, my fucking video card drivers because it would fail all the time. And I could yeah. never figure out why. And once I swapped to this this new, uh, faster SSD, it was it's been fine. So I was like, mm-hmm. I was sitting there thinking, like, is it a situation like that where it's attempting to update, <laughs> it's attempting to do its thing, but it just can't because my SSD is retarded? I don't know. Yeah, no, no not this case. Discord just they like updating shit all the time. I don't all know right. what it is. Well, I mean, that's good that they're keeping the software up to date. They're 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 yeah. taking that five dollars that I give them a month and using it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And whatever deals they make with uh, developers and stuff. Right. They, I, I have no complaints about Discord. I mean, you know, aside from the whole spying on almost everything that you do on your computer thing. <laughs> it's a little annoying, but yeah. at this point I'm like, meh. I mean, you know, for me, I just don't want Microsoft doing it. I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what the difference is. Um, like Discord, you know, scans your computer for games you're playing and shit like that. And they know what you're doing on it to a degree, but for some mm-hmm. reason, the way Microsoft doing it just feels so much so. It just feels shadier. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, when Microsoft uh, started doing it, jeez, they. Uh, I mean, they were they weren't you know very open about it, and then when they realized, oh shit, we have to be. People are pissed. Then it was like how much they were stealing. Yeah, blew, like blew everyone's like mind, and then uh, yeah, I mean it was just like, wow, you guys, you guys are assholes. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's, 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 it's not okay. It's, it's not okay at all. Yeah, yeah, no, it was uh, it was probably like with Windows 10 that was pretty uh, eye opening for a lot of people, and I think that even more than Facebook, like that whole thing with Facebook and the um, that company that was selling like using Cambridge Analytica and stuff. Yeah. Came, yeah. Yeah, that that was, I think, the final tipping point. But I think Microsoft with Windows 10, when that kind of started and people had like people started opening their eyes a little bit more. Yeah. To uh, the amount of stuff that was being taken. And then Cambridge Analytica, it was like, whoa, the fucking gates of Tartarus opened. I mean, yeah, it, it, when I found out about Cambridge Analytica, that's when I was like, you know what? I really, really don't think I need uh, Facebook in my life anymore. Yeah. You know. So hi everybody! Hey, welcome to Young Godly Geeks. I'm Joe. I'm Luke, and we're here to talk about shit. Hooray! Yeah, I and honestly enough, there was a lot of shit that happened. Is there? Because well, I haven't been paying any either. attention because I've been half dead this entire week. Ah, uh, that's understandable. I've been. Uh, you you've not been working, nothing. so you ain't done shit. No, I ain't <laughs> done jack shit. It's been awesome. Four days of vacation. Well, yeah. two days of vacation, on and then of two off day days. Off. Yeah. I mean, I got that coming up um, for the Smash Bros. release. I'm going to do whatever I have to in order to make sure I get that. I need to do that. I, f- I should probably request a couple of days around that off. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I mean, Let's December 7th, I'm, 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 not, I'm not fucking working, even if I got a call off. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what I'll do is call off. <laughs> Tim will know exactly why we're fucking doing it, but eh. Yeah, he'll get over it. Yeah, oh yeah, management there will get over it. They, they'll understand so, you know, I use OBS um, to record this when we do it over Discord just because uh, it's it's easiest, right? Yeah. My, my CPU is just hovering around 40%, which is nothing because I have plenty of power. Um, and it's, pr- it's not actually using all of my cores anyway. But every now and then, the video capture on OBS will freeze and it says encoding overloaded. 
And it's like, how? You're only you're not even using half of my processor. How is the encoding overloaded? <laughs> I, I don't understand it. BS <clears throat> decides to be difficult. Yeah. I mean, I think it's as long as it's still I don't care if it's not recording the video part of it because there's no actual video to record. As long as it's recording the audio, fine. Mm hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's the important part. It's just weird that it, it, it sounds, I mean, it's an error. It's not, I don't know. That's it's stupid. it's it's basically really stupid. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I have. It is, it's really dumb. Yeah, it's just <laughs> dumb. Like, there's no reason for it to actually be complaining that, oh my god, the encoder's overloaded, but how? In fact, it just, it just said that encoding is overloaded, but it itself was reporting a 13% usage. It's like, how are you? Whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, we it's we like do have some we do have some things to talk about, right? You said we do. Yeah, oh yeah. There's a couple of news stories. One I find uh, really interesting um, that just the other day I, I got in my Google feed is that uh, Marvel has two Blade projects in the works, and they're currently in talks with Wesley Snipes. Yeah, I did hear something about that. I didn't get the chance to stop and read the articles because I was at work um, when I saw that pop up. But yeah, that sounds that sounds kind of neat, man. I I, I want Hell to see yeah. Blade. I want to see Blade yeah. reimagined, or if you would, or maybe rema remake you know, a remake, a reboot would be nice. I call it. A, uh, yeah, you know, I'd be happy if Blade One stayed as like canon. I yeah. guess is the best way to put it. Blade so One was great. Soft reboot blade 2 wasn't terrible but you can please ignore blade 3 um yeah i i don't know how i feel about blade 3 like as a trilogy i enjoyed the movies um I, and i liked blade 3 because you know it was ryan reynolds being deadpool before deadpool was a thing i did i did like ryan reynolds in it yeah. but it's like if you if 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 you took blade 3 away and i, I probably wouldn't notice I, I probably wouldn't. Blade Two is probably the same way. Like if you just if Blade Two and Three just poofed today, vanished from the annals of history, only for us to remember that they were a thing. I don't think I'd miss them. No, I don't think I would either. But I mean, as a trilogy, though, it does stand up pretty well. Like there, there are those movies that you can sit down and you can watch. But I definitely yeah. agree that the first one is is the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I I'm done with keeping. I, I'm down with keeping the second one. I guess I, I, the third one. I part of me wants to say not the third one because I still have that hope that we eventually get Deadpool in the MCU, and the fact that he could comment. Uh, I mean, although that might be great too, that he can comment on some dude who looks like Ryan Reynolds. I don't know. It's, or you can that's comment. How about commenting on like finding like meeting a chick with uh, teeth in her teeth in her vagina, right? Like. Exactly, exactly. Like, that yeah. would be that would be hilarious to me. Vagina dentata. And the fact that that was a thing, man, that was just that was just wrong on so many Vagina levels. Vagina dentata. Teeth is a good movie though. Great, yeah. Crazy ass movie. But yeah, I know I like the Blade trilogy. I'd like I'd like a soft reboot. I Or maybe you know, not maybe not necessarily a reboot, but like like just do just do another movie in the series. Expand it a mm -hmm. bit. Especially since, um, you know, now you have better storytellers, you have better storytelling, you've got, we've got much better effects, so we can, we can make that, a lot of that just, just nicer. And I want to see Wesley Snipes and things. Yeah, I didn't read the whole article, but I mean, now, it, it, I'm assuming they probably guess on what it could be, since there's no other, like, confirmation or anything. But, um, I wouldn't mind a, uh, Blade, uh, Netflix-style show. Obviously, it wouldn't go on Netflix because I don't think they're going to be any more Netflix series, right? New ones. Uh, at the I same mean, time, I'm incorrect about that. I don't like, know. See, at the same be. time, it's like it's Marvel, not Disney. So, yeah. Mar I mean, I realize that Disney owns Marvel, but it, it Marvel is the one who made the deal with Netflix, and Netflix, I believe, funds a lot of those shows. So, I don't think those shows would go anywhere. But to sit there and say that, you know, that the series you know i don't know that the series would be there or not but then again yeah. you also mentioned that that guy who wants to protect disney's brand so he's like no r-rated stuff it's like oh, yeah and they no get fun. away with that on the net I, yeah i think it's enough degrees of separation yeah that he's all right with it it's why i'm afraid for the disney app 
I don't because the the Marvel movies are going to it. We know that for sure. Oh yeah, um, I mean that's where they're going to go now. Two, or not Guardians Two, Ant Man and the Wasp, last one that's uh, going to be on Netflix or or am yeah. I? Yeah, I believe that's correct. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I, it's or the it's first either, one that won't be. I don't remember. I, yeah, it's either Infinity War or Ant Man and the Wasp would be the last Marvel movie that pops up on Netflix, and then the yeah. rest is you're going to have to give Disney fifteen dollars a month to to watch it on their service. Yeah, so I don't. So that's already gone over. So you, you know, I don't know how deep that's going to go. I honestly hope, uh, like like we said, obviously, I I. I want to see a new series, uh, and if they're going to work with Netflix, then I want them to do it. If they are willing to work with Netflix and keep doing what's going on there, then that's perfectly fine with me, too. I kind right. of prefer that, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I would love to see Blade interact with those characters. And you go from, like, the reason I said Blade 1 um, is he, like, he doesn't have, like, a, a team then. Uh, but I could see them doing something where Wesley Snipes plays like a mentor role. Maybe. But I don't know if they'd want to do that because right. you want Blade. You want Blade to be Blade, you know? Right, exactly. You know, like the son of Blade. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to water down Blade either. Yeah, like, but I don't want to talked about adding uh, Morbius to those shows, too. And Morbius is a vampire from the Marvel uh, in comics universe. So hmm. Blade and Morbius. um what, what was it? Marvel, Marvel Knights, Marvel. There's a, there's like, uh, there's, there's like a, a comic series, I think. And I could be completely wrong, but I, I swear there's something where Blade teams up with Mo- Morbius and, um, a werewolf character and possibly a Sasquatch. <laughs> I might just be thinking of the, uh, the Northern Avengers, but you know, Jesus way, Christ, I, like, that's amazing. I don't care. I want to see Blade and like Morbius, sir. Mobius, whatever his name is, right? I just or Blade be a part of Daredevil and Jessica Jones and that that sort of stuff. That would be kind of neat. Yeah, I mean, um, he doesn't have to be in the MCU, the, the overarching MCU. Yeah, no, he can just pop up in the Netflix uh, universe, which would be kind of neat. Although, yeah. I mean, there are definitely references to the to the other in in those. So, I mean, like you'll you'll get yeah from time to time. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I did finish Luke Cage season two. Um, oh yeah, it's pretty good overall. What's your uh, overall? It it's really good. It's it's okay. a, it's at least as good as the first season. I'd say. I really That's like I really like Bushmaster in in that like he's just he's just a really he's a cool motherfucker. Like he really is. Like he, okay. he and he's, he's honor bound and he knows what he's doing. He has a reason for everything, and you get to relate to him at the end. And I don't I don't want to spoil too much, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. He's mm. not actually the villain. Okay. So, and, uh, like, in the end, it, 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 you know, the villain gets got in this time. Okay. Like, it's, so it's actually kind of, it's actually kind of fun. Satisfying. Yeah, it was definitely satisfying. Yeah. yeah. Especially the way uh, it actually ended up going down because it was like, I honestly, when it happened, I'm sitting there thinking like, what the hell? And then, you know, they show you like how it got to that point because you, they don't, like make it known it's one of those after after uh like a flashback things like and you're like oh okay okay. i'm okay with that that's that's cool so yeah i mean i recommend going and watching it um you don't have to i I don't think you have to watch uh jessica jones for it jessica jones is kind of kind of in her own world um, but i would at least jessica jones yeah but i would at least recommend watching like the last like three or four episodes of the defenders if you haven't yet um because there's a lot of things that that tie into tie into that well not a lot of things but there's enough things that tie into that that you'll start season two and just be completely lost Mm -hmm. but the defenders was good enough on its own in mirror to watch so yeah i definitely agree with that i like the defenders and i'll have to check that out i'll probably I want to watch Jessica Jones season two, but I think I'll watch Luke Cage season two first. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, um, I think there's a little bit of crossover, but I, I don't. I, Jessica Jones, like her story in season two is is pretty much it's mostly self contained. I think I think Luke may have popped up in one of the episodes, but overall, um, it's pretty self contained, and you it doesn't it doesn't connect. Um, to the rest of them, just kind of like how the individual shows really didn't connect until you got to the Defenders and uh, 
Iron Fist, which started to connect them all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had heard uh, that he's not in it very much, which actually turned me. It's what like, kind of turned me off from watching Jessica Jones, <laughs> is that I, I like those connections in those shows. Um, I mean, and without that connection, I was kind of like, eh, do I really want? I mean, I, I, I would say that Jessica Jones is worth watching. Yeah. Hearing like, that it's not like every episode is another uh, trip to a therapist uh, of but depression. I'm definitely uh, more likely to watch it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's, it's definitely not. To get through. It, it's definitely it's definitely not not as bad as that. Like, yeah, no, it, they they've got they've got better storytelling this time around. Better writing, action is the action is was pretty good. Like for me, it, it I really did get like just into the show once once I started from, right from the get go too. It, it Jessica Jones season two was was much much better than say Iron Fist. Okay, good. Um, that's, that's, I, like, I see where you had difficulty getting into Iron Fist, and I see why you didn't watch it. I, I yeah. overall did enjoy it, but it was one. Of, it was a slow burn, um, kind of like how I had to get into Doctor Who at first. The very first season was very difficult to watch, um, mm-hmm. and like, dude, literally, I watched like it took me a year to finish the first season of Doctor Who. <laughs> And when I say that, I mean like an exact year because uh, I watched it and then I didn't watch it. And then when I finally went back to it and finished it, it was on like it was on the day that I first started watching it the year before. OK, so like but it was, it was one of those things that now that I'm through it, I can go back and watch it a 100 times and enjoy it. I don't yeah. think that Iron Fist quite fits that, but um, because it's it's yeah. OK, it's OK. It's yeah. just it's definitely weaker than the other Marvel shows, but yeah, oh, for, it's good to hear sure. the second seasons of the other ones. I've been just been watching comedy on right. Netflix when I when I'm watching it. Uh, I finished uh, Burt Kreischer's stand up uh, just the other day, right? Or yesterday, I think it was. Right. Oh my god, I was fucking just crying tears of laughter. He's so goddamn funny. His stand-up was amazing. Oh, yeah. Speaking of comedy, you know, we just had uh, Team Force R finally release um, oh, another Jesus. DBZ Abridged episode, which I just uh, I just finished 64? watching. 60. 60. Yeah, it's 60, 60 part yeah. one. We've done more uh, podcasts than they've done episodes. Yeah. Yeah, we have. And they've been doing it a hell of a lot longer than we have. <laughs> yeah, we are. This is episode, I believe, 66 that we're recording now. Uh, mm-hmm. So if you want to count our, our side episodes, bonus content, and uh, the pod and the um, the D and D podcast, which I'm still working on, and I have to, I'm sorry that that's so weird on the releases, guys. Um, but we're only allowed so much space with our pod host, and what we what I originally planned out with the space that we have was four normal around an hour hour and fifteen episodes. Um, so throwing that extra thing into the mix kind of throws things off. So I have to stagger the releases in such a way that I can get in all of our normal podcasts from a month and then mm-hmm. that as well without going over without without going over our limit in the sense that we can't go over that limit if I try to upload a file that would go beyond that limit it won't let me. So that's why that's kind of weird. Just in case anybody was wondering. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh yeah, no, if you count all that, we've done like 60, almost 70 episodes of, of just dumb shit that we've done over there over the uh, <clears throat> last, what, year and a half or so that we've been doing mm-hmm. this. In fact, yeah, we just hit September. We started doing this in March 2017. So, yeah, we're coming up on a year and a half now. Woo! Yay, go us. It's pretty awesome. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah, that yeah. we've been able to commit to it for so long. Like, Yeah, cool. yeah. And that I haven't, I, I haven't had like a, pardon me, a mental breakdown from editing all our stupid shit. No, not not yet. We haven't really uh, had many like taken, you know, had to take many breaks or anything. We've been pretty good. Stuff. We're just patting our own backs here. Yeah. <laughs> Go us. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm one of those people that I, I don't like to do things, so. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 I'm I'm 100 percent right there with you. Like I'm I'm all about commitment under the right circumstance. Like I've been at the same job for eight fucking years and all that, but it's like this is this is something that doesn't really benefit me, I guess, in any way. So yeah, it's just 
just for fun. It is for fun. Just like the D&D is for fun. Yep. And it is fun. I've been actually, that's part of what I've been doing on my days off is planning. Uh, and just it, it ended up where I didn't plan on mm. being so referential with what we're currently doing. Right. But it totally is. And then like 100 percent. And when I realized that I was like, fuck it, I'm just going all the way. Do it. Do yeah. it. So like like I know you guys are going to get it almost immediately. And that's, that's fine with me. It's going to be funny. I mean, maybe. But, uh, Jake's kind of a Jake's kind of a doof sometimes. Johnny is just dumb. <laughs> he is, but this one hundred percent, I know. I, I, and Jake, I don't know if he'll listen to this podcast. I know this is something that the whole thing that it's referencing is something he's really, really into and has been into for a long time. Right. So he'll probably immediately, uh, immediately get it. Jake, if you're listening, you're a doof. <laughs> but yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I did on my days off that I figure I might as well talk about. I, uh, I've had like $80 just sitting in my steam wallet that right. I haven't spent because, uh, I got it from selling that gun skin from PUBG. <laughs> I totally paid off that game. That is, is awesome. hilarious. And more. Yeah, no, yeah. you, you made two and a half times a the profit there or two oh, and yeah. two thirds times that profit there. Cause the game's only 30 bucks. Yeah, it was like uh, I sold it for like 90 something and then Steam takes their cut. And uh, I was like, oh, fuck, that's awesome. But I've been looking for a game to play for weeks. And I'm like, when I don't have money, for some reason, I spend it on stupid games I don't play, apparently. And then when I do have free money, I'm like fucking super stingy. I wish I wish that I could be that way where if I had like free money, I didn't spend it. And I yeah. could be stingy with it, but I, I can't when I have like, oh, I didn't plan to have this money. I'm going to go blow it on some hookers. I don't yeah. know. Well, the funny thing is I like, totally like, I, yeah, it's it's weird that I haven't haven't just blown it. But I'm kind of picky with games. And right. funnily enough, I've thought multiple times I really wish I had this on like could transfer it to the switch. And then I'd probably buy some of those indie games there. For right. some reason, I think, and I think it's a case of I want to play things on my TV rather than my computer. And even though I can do that um, with like Steam Link, at the same time, I don't, I don't know. I just sometimes want to play. I want to play it on the Switch. Right. But uh, I've been picky. Uh, and then the other day, a uh, new Battle Royale came out called Scum from uh, Devolver Digital. Uh, they're the publisher anyway. I don't think they developed it. I think it was a smaller company that developed it. But I really like their games. Right. And I was like, fuck it. I'll go ahead and give this a shot. And yeah, I mean, like decent the, reviews. Yeah. Devolver Digital has definitely has some unique, unique shit going for them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'll give this a shot. Downloaded it. Uh, played it like two ni- uh, last night, two nights ago. Mm. Uh what I didn't realize is I was expecting something closer to like I knew it was it wasn't quite PUBG. It was more of that sort of you're put out in the open and survive type thing. Right. Um, so I was expecting something more like Daisy, or the mod or the standalone, which I only played a little bit of. But I was like, yeah, that'll be fine. Right. So I'm like, cool. So I plan on playing. Uh, instead, what it is is like a um the forest kind of game oh oh if you know what i mean yeah yeah so i think i, uh, I like, think cody might have brought that up like hey we should play that and i would like i would love to but i hate survival games exactly <laughs> yeah. and it definitely is a survival game like no um, l- l- listen um i like playing like skyrim and adding survival elements to it but when it came, when it comes to survival games, I'm just so over them. You know, it's just like yeah, they're they're over. It's an oversaturation thing. So that's all. Survival it is. and crafting. Yeah, survival and crafting. Like I mean, I I ran um for some friends and I ran a uh, don't starve together server for about mm-hmm. two months, and we ended up shutting it down because I could I couldn't stand playing it, and one of our one of our other guys on the server burned everything down, not once, but twice. And oh. then there was a third instance yeah. where we lost everything to the, the big bad monster that pops up in the game. I'm like, no. I'm, and I, I would spend, I, I spent the first night after he set everything on fire, meticulously learning admin commands and restoring things bit by bit. Yeah. And I, 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 after that, um, I just hated the game because all our progress was gone. 
I'm, yeah. I, and yeah, like I said, man, I'm just tired of survival games. I'm uh, I'm not a fan of survival at all. If they have like trackers, uh, this scum was interesting in that you didn't. I, I don't know if you had to have food. I honestly didn't play it long enough. I think you did because you had a metabolism tracker. Right. And it had like a crazy amount of information on there. Huh. Like you could see everything, like all of your character stats, which is pretty interesting. Cool. However, I was not. I'm like, I, I'm not looking for that in a game on top of I'm not playing another game where I have to run around banging rocks together until I make a hatchet. Yeah. And yeah, as soon as I was like, OK, so let's go look for armor guns. No, I started picking up rocks. I was like, nope, I'm done. Just fucking closed it and immediately submitted it for refund. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't even be mad at you at that point, man. Like, yeah, I was like, no, sorry, it's not for me. I'm sure it's a great game. Um, like I said, there's a lot of good reviews on it. I'm just not. I it's can't not, do yeah, one no. of those games. Yeah, I, that's a genre of games that just I, I think it needs to go away now something man i i, I could assume somebody's gonna do something and hell scum may be the game that like revitalizes it right. brings interest back into that sort of game but um i'm not gonna be one of the people that gets into it most yeah no i i can't i can't do that kind of stuff i just i i'm i'm over it you know yeah um, um from what i hear from like reviews and stuff it's a lot of what people get pissed off of uh with we happy few right that another kickstarter kind of uh i won't say it like terrible story but uh i know there's a lot of disappointed people with that game because they didn't expect it to be a survival like manager health and stuff game originally and then it turned into that but uh, isn't that the game where you have to take like happy pills and stay happy and shit yeah, yeah i'm done i'm over that kind of shit yeah that was interesting but uh yeah so i was like fuck it i returned the game uh, so instead, I went ahead and something that just released like today was Ultimate Fishing Simulator. I saw you playing that. Um, that popped up in my little thing on Steam notifications. I started laughing yeah. like, really, Luke? I was like, at first I'm looking at it laughing like, oh, great. A game. That's kind of funny. Ha ha. And then I noticed it has multiplayer. And oh. I was like, fuck it. And I bought it. <laughs> okay why not you know i've been enjoying that i'm not gonna lie i enjoy the hell out of it it's fun <laughs> it's a great fishing game it has multiplayer uh, fishing yeah yeah i haven't uh i've been playing just solo on the little starter lake they put you on so far but uh yeah you can just join servers and just go fishing with random people or fish with friends that is, that is awesome <laughs> I, I'm looking so at the like, uh, Steam page now, watching like the video trailer thing that pops up. It's like, okay, yeah, it, it I was looks like, interesting. I was watching that. You could buy boats and shit and go out fishing. And I was like, okay, I can do that. I bought. Uh, they actually have a hunting game too that I bought a long time ago, and I've I played a little bit of it. Right. But I keep getting like severely lost in the woods <laughs> <laughs> and can't get back to like the camps and stuff. And just getting really annoyed with the the lack of animals and like the lack of anything to do. Um, yeah. So I was like, I, I haven't played that much, but the fishing game so far, I've enjoyed it. Like level three. I got I gotta say, I want I want to throw this out there because um, I'm reading this uh-huh. page and I'm reading all this. It is it, it it speaks to the status of our industry here, the video game industry, because that's what we are primarily talking about most of the time. Um, mm-hmm. That a, a like like a feature of your game has to be no micro payments no yep. need to worry about your wallet you buy the game once and you play it as long as you like like that is that is a problem it's sad yeah like like <laughs> i i, I don't you... know what more i can say about it because it's something we've talked about so much but it's something yeah. that's also so frustrating and i'm so passionate about it but i i just like how how terrible is it that that is a feature of that's something they're advertising for this $20 yeah. fishing game yeah uh and, and i mean can you imagine the ea sport fishing game where like you have to buy their in game you you can earn slowly the uh, currency right. or you can just buy their in game currency to get new like reels and uh, new boats and shit and you play the game for like a week and uh You've just gotten like your first boat or something. You're out there with a little like kitty fish, Power Rangers fishing pole. 
Hell yeah. And, which actually people. No, no, it, it would totally be that. Spider-Man for me. Yeah, yeah, or Spider-Man or a Barbie fishing pole. And then, like, you see this dude go blazing past in, like, a fucking wave boat. With, he's like, in a this mega... Giant... No, no, yeah, he's, he's in catching a... megalodons and shit. No, he's in, like, a mega yacht with, like, a diamond-threaded yeah. boat-mounted fishing rod. Like, you know, like in Futurama and shit. Yes. Where they Looks catch down that... Looks you like, hey, bro, why didn't you pre-order? <laughs> yeah, like, god damn, dude pre-order culture there. yeah <laughs> that's when you just kind of kill yourself like ah, whatever i don't whatever it's not worth yeah, yeah. it so i don't want to live on this planet anymore it's not, just video games are done we're gonna cancel video games <laughs> yeah no i'm i'm yeah god it like i said it's just that 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 speaks to a sadness in me I mean, because I can remember when when video games were a one time purchase. I can remember when you didn't have to to make multiple purchases to keep playing your shit. Like I don't mm-hmm. I don't mind DLC, but although that was what that was what started us down this path, but I didn't mind yeah. DLC because DLC was optional. You know, like exactly. you di- you didn't need DLC to play the game. Uh, but now it's getting to a point where you know you can't you can't play a game without giving the company that made the game more money to keep playing. Mm-hmm. That's I, like, and the funny thing is we've gotten to the point now where DLC isn't even like normal DLC, like fucking you can buy this extra pack or skins or you can buy fucking well, this other, whatever stupid shit. Like it's to the point now where that's like just accepted. Yeah. Just fine. Like you just said, like that's, that's just industry standard. It's when they're like, and no microtransactions. Yeah, you like, know. that's a fucking feature. Hey, yeah. thanks, you're not gonna nickel and dime me to death. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I don't know, no man. Like, like I, I, I've i never minded that in free-to-play games. Like, you gotta make yeah. money somehow. But when, when you're charging me money up front for a game, and it's, like, it's, it's, and it's AAA price, you're gonna charge me $6 for a game, I, fuck, it didn't, didn't make me pay more? No. I don't remember the game. But I know it was Jim Sterling was saying something in uh, one of the videos recently that he was talking about the fact that one of these games out there now has uh, a season pass, a multiple like multiple season passes, as well as setting up pre-orders for the next season pass, which just that 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 in itself blows my fucking mind. So are you are you telling me it has two season passes? Multiple season passes. So yeah, that's that's like common now. Um, as well as you can pre-order the next season pass before it comes out, because you need to pre-order nothingness. Like that's that's at the point they've gotten. I hate pre-orders more than anything. Um, I mean, I don't, like, I don't, well, not more okay. than anything, but I still I've hated them for a long time. I'm not opposed to pre-orders when there's a physical object you are pre-ordering and you're like you're getting a physical object for it. You know, that's something that's limited. I yeah, can, yeah, I can yeah. Understand that. Like, like that your or, like when you pre-ordered uh, the the Halo Legendary Edition or whatever, and you got that helmet. That that is cool, right? Like, I'm okay well, with that. That was buying the collector's edition. Well, and, but pre-ordering it because it's most likely going to be gone. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like that. Yeah. That that's what I meant. Uh, not you, you didn't get it because you pre-ordered. Oh, well, you yeah. did get it because you pre-ordered. But you know, like like. I get, you had, I get you though. Yeah, you had to pre-order it to get that because it was a limited run. It was a limited thing. So stuff like that is really, really cool. When you're pre-ordering a game though, so that you can have a skin and like a gun and like I don't know a bobblehead thing in game, like get the f- come on, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, gating off content for pre-orders is what pisses me off. Yeah, um, even, that's like, as bad it, as on disc it DLC. Small. Yeah, it started small, and it wasn't so bad with, like, it, you'd have little things. Like, I one of the Gears of War, maybe all three of them, uh, all you did was you get one golden. One gun has a golden skin. Right. Right. So, and it, it didn't, like, I don't think in those games you had to earn a lot of skins in the first two. They just weren't a thing. You just played the multiplayer. Um, and it just, from there, it just went buck wild, where missions would be, like, only for pre-order bonuses and, like, content and extra weapon packs to get you a boot like um the borderlands games right the hyperion weapon packs and stuff that would give you an edge at the beginning of the game and all this other crap but by level five it was pointless 
Yeah, oh yeah. It passed past the Bullamong. Everything was useless except for uh, the sniper rifle. Yeah, and even Only that. you usually don't get one for a while. Yeah, and even that wasn't even great. So, I mean. No, it, oh no. They were, they were right about average. Um, yeah, the, the Gearbox exclusive weapons, like you said, for Borderlands 2, which, by the way, you didn't, you know, I, I got them and I never pre-ordered the game. Um, they're just oh, kind yeah. of meh. Eventually, they, it came with, like, the Game of the Year edition and stuff. Yeah. And they, they eventually give that stuff as DLC. And it's just, I don't know. That stuff's annoying. Ooh, um, bored me. Pre-orders. I wasn't even planning on talking about this, but uh, pre-orders being brought up. Um, EA and Battlefield are uh, having a tough go of it right now. Yeah, nobody wants to pre-order Battlefield 5. Yeah, turns out when you tell uh, people don't buy my game if you don't like it, uh, they don't pre-order the game. They're not going to buy it. No. So uh, they don't like it. And then EA shareholders are going, uh, because they only see pre-order numbers. They don't actually give a shit about game sales, which fucking is still something that drives me fucking crazy. I mean, yeah, but, that, that, um, this 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 is the problem right here with being progressive for the sake of being progressive and trying to force yeah. it down people's throats, which is something I've always had a problem with. That's that's really the vibe that I got from this. Like, listen, I don't have a problem with you throwing a woman on the cover of a war game, whatever. That's yeah. fine with me. The problem is, is when you force it on people for the sake cuz cuz they're not you know, this is supposed to be a, a, a history thing, you know. They're yeah. not being historically accurate with it. Why and would you I don't have think I, I think the major thing that they didn't they don't get and still don't get is that people weren't just pissed that there's a female in our in the war game. Um, people are pissed about that first multiplayer trailer where it looked like something you would expect out of Call of Duty or Fortnite, where there's a, a woman running around with a bunch of British soldiers and you're telling us that it's you know, this other, I mean, they didn't really have any information on the battle then, but she has like a cybernetic arm. And like I've yeah. ranted about before, the soldiers have like katanas on their backs and stuff. And it's like that that's what people ranted about. Yeah. I and mean, then they, EA and Dice, they took it as, oh, well, you don't want women's in the video game at all. Well, fuck you. No, we, yeah. we want it to be accurate. We, we're, yeah, we, we, we like I said, like I like I just said, we don't care that there's women in the game. We don't care that yeah. you put a woman on the cover. What we care about is why does she have a cybernetic arm from like you know, you know, the yeah. Marvel universe or something, you know, like, was, like, well, how does that work? It's like steampunk esque. Yeah. Like, like, I'm sorry, but guys, if you're going to make a game based on a historical era, maybe try to be a little bit true to that era. Yeah. We're going to, that's kind of what people want out of it. You know? Yeah. I mean, you're going to give me a world war two shooter. I want a world war two shooter. I don't want, yeah. you know, I don't want cyborgs in my world war two shooter, you know, like, that's not how this works. That's not what this is, you know. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I get that. that. Like, that was funny. so their pre-orders were not doing well. They also, once again, the EA. I don't know if they just think that their shit doesn't stink, or and I, I thought it was incompetence when they did this to Titanfall two, um, but then now they've done it with Battlefield one or Battlefield five, which is like their major thing. Yeah. They stuck it at the same launch window as Red Dead 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops, what the fuck ever. Yeah. Which, kudos to them. I talked, I have massive shit about that game, eliminating single player, adding the Battle Royale, going all out on the shit. Uh, they're selling, like, their pre-orders are higher than ever. They know exactly what their fans want, and the COD guys, they're buying it up, so fine. You know, that's yeah, hey, yeah, go market. for you. I can't I'm, even hate on it. Right, I'm glad that you know your audience. I'm glad that you're catering to yeah. them. I'm not your audience, so I don't like it. But I'm exactly. glad that you know your people, you know, who, who's buying your game. So please, go for it. Do what you're going to do. Yeah, yeah, more power to them. They're going to they're gonna get theirs. And that's cool. They, they, they have that market. Um, it's just funny that it, it, there's still some crossover to be expected. <clears> and EA <throat> thought it would be a great time to put Battlefield 5 right between that. And like I said, Red Dead Redemption 2 which is going to have a massive amount of appeal. Yeah, yeah. It would be like somebody remaking Bubsy and putting it in the same release window as, like, Super Mario Odyssey. You know, like, you, you're you just choosing the absolute worst yeah, yeah, possible time to release that game. It's funny. Well, I, and you know what? 
if Battlefield V's first trailer was the one they just recently showed from GamesCon, and they had shown gameplay, instead of having that whole controversy and all of that stupid shit, where they started talking about this, like, Fortnite-esque building mode and the fact that they're adding the Battle Royale, all that different stuff. Had they not done that and gone with, you know, a traditional Battlefield route, I don't yeah. think they'd be in this position at all. I mean, you're probably And then you can still right. have the women in the video game and all. Yeah, I mean, I, I would but never... But they'd still be... They wouldn't have this controversy. I don't get it, man. I just, like... <sighs> With as long as they've been in the video game business, you would think that by now, by yeah. now, they would have learned what it is they're doing wrong. But they yeah, they yeah. just want to have that. They just want to have that arrogance. Where it's like, oh no, we we're not doing any wrong. Like, no, you're you're totally doing wrong. You are yeah. totally well, I mean, fucking everything up. It's kind of like with the Xbox One, where they didn't get it. They they they, they hadn't been doing wrong, and they started doing wrong very quickly. Yeah, and a lot of it all at once, and then they were like, "But, but we're we we do no wrong," and people were like, "Well, you are now." Well, you're fucking up. Yeah. You're fucking up. Why are you fucking up? Stop fucking up. Yeah, you know, <laughs> start hitting them with a newspaper. No, bad, bad. Exactly, and that's just that just frustrates the fuck out of people, you know. Hey, you know what? The Xbox One may not have been a a great success out of the gate, um, but I, I have to admit. Microsoft makes some great hardware when they want to. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's 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 gotten better over time. They kind of retconned a lot of things that they did wrong. I think. Yeah, I think they fixed a lot of a lot of their initial issues. Um, I still wouldn't buy an Xbox, but you know, yeah, I got an Xbox controller and it's pretty nice. So. Yeah. <laughs> Although uh, another thing I was going to bring up today, anyway, with uh, stop fucking up is the general theme. Uh, Sony's president has yeah. finally come out and commented on the whole um, cross pla- cross cross that out cross <laughs> yeah yeah okay. no, I'm sorry not president their CEO um, and those the same thing saying, yeah I guess I don't know maybe uh, I'm wrong I don't know. maybe maybe a, like a who cares president. this yeah I don't know. you have their a point CEO, to make. I, their head guy said uh, it's not going to happen with the PS4 well you just put. I, Seriously, I I re- like I know it's it's extreme to say, but I really do think that's like that's seriously them saying, "Hey, foot, meet this bullet." And yeah, uh, I think over, I don't know how quickly we're going to get to the next generation of consoles. If there's quite a while before we do, one hundred percent, yeah, they, they're shooting themselves in the foot. And uh, then again, they could also go back on it at any time. Uh, I, I don't think it would be very hard for him to eat, like to go, eh, well, I was wrong. We'll yeah, exactly. Um, but at this point, if that's like, like a serious, like, no, we won't do it. Yeah. It, over time, that's going to become more and more common for oh, yeah. cross platform stuff. I mean, you know, and, and that's gonna, that's gonna, and, and if it does continue into the next gen, that's really going to give just that, that's, that leg yeah. up to, it's going to give that leg up to Microsoft. Because, you know, if yeah. I can sit here and I can hop on my PC and, you know, our, our buddy Big Mike can hop onto his Xbox and you can hop onto your PC and we can all play the same fucking game, that's a big, that's a pretty big deal, right? Like, yeah. that, that brings more gamers together, that gives us more choice, and ultimately it's better for the industry, I think. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I get what they're saying. I get, you know, they don't want non-Sony purchases to be used on a Sony, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you're you're really just being petty there, but I also do kind of understand where you're coming from. But at the yeah. same time, it's like, but this is what people want, and like for me personally, like the PS4 has a lot of great games that I would probably play. Um, and yeah. I've stated this before. There, are, there's, a, there's a, but that would be all I would buy it for. You know. Mm-hmm. Like just those games, since you won't let me play Fortnite with my play, my friends friends on Switch or my friends on whoever, the fact that you won't let me play Rocket League with these other friends, it's like, come on. God. It's like uh, I told someone the other day that was asking about which console to buy somebody, and I was like, well, it really depends on what they want it for. Um, and uh, they told me it was a young kid, so I was like, okay, that skips half of what I would ask you. Uh, it's like if it's a young kid, uh, what do his friends play on? That's the most important thing. Right. And Absolutely. That it, is the most it's important. It's probably going to be Fortnite because it's a young kid. And that's 
the the in game right now, I was like, you're looking at an Xbox One or a Switch. Yep. If that's what he wants to play. Yep. Um, unless his friends really are all on the PS4, I was like, that's where you're going to find the most uh, people to play with. I said, if it Absolutely. was anybody older, I'd probably recommend a PS4 if they're not someone that wants to play online games. Yeah, I mean, if you want to play, play single player games. yeah, if you want to play single player games, I'm 100 percent recommending the PS4 because right exactly. now they have the best. They have the best single player games, and unless you want to buy, build a PC or something, or buy a pre made yeah. gaming PC, which by the way are getting so much cheaper now. Oh yeah, totally. It, the value, the uh, the price of those is, the, and the the ability to play games with uh, like pre built PCs is way higher than it used to be, with games being optimized better nowadays. Oh yeah, I mean like a, a six or seven hundred dollar, um, well not even that, like four or five hundred dollar, you know, HP desktop can can play a lot of a lot of decent games a decent clip so i mean yeah. you know all that stuff starting to catch up and converge and i love it you know because that, that opens up the opportunity oh, yeah. for more people because i'm not one of those people that want to gatekeep things like I, I want people to play i want people to enjoy i want people to exactly, bond you know exactly. like because that's how that's how that's how humans are supposed to be that's how we're supposed to work no yeah. it's funny um one of the things that uh oh you sh- Oh, yeah, Yoshida said uh, was that on cross-platform play, uh, our way is of thinking is always that PlayStation is the best play to play, uh, less place to play. No, it's not. Uh, Fort- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Fortnite, I believe, is partnered with PlayStation 4 is the best experience for users. No, it's That's not. our belief. <laughs> he said, but Your actually, beliefs are wrong, sir. we already opened some games as cross-platform with PC and some others. So we don't. Uh, so we decide based on what's best for user experience. That is our way of thinking for cross platform. So honestly, I, at this point, I don't I, like the article. Uh, is like says you know that will not have cross platform play. I think he's covering his bases. Yeah. Um, covering his least, ass. Sort of. Yeah. yeah. He's saying that oh we've done it before. It'd be whatever's best for users. It's well, like a non committal. I'll, I'll tell you what's best for users. What's best for users is being as open to this as you possibly can. And being as open to this as you possibly can is allowing allowing it to happen. Like, I don't know. What's really funny to me is that Sony's in the best place for this. Right. Um, Microsoft has really not... It has a, maybe a teeny handful of exclusive games. Right. That, um, and I'm not even counting the play on Windows shit. I'm just like, it, yeah, it, no, it's you, you really should that. It's not cross platform. Yeah, you really should. Because, I mean, you got you remember how they released that one Call of Duty game on the Windows store. Oh, God. And yeah. when somebody went to go play a multiplayer match because they made it so that they could only interact with other Windows store users, there was literally one other person online. Exactly. On top of like, no, Windows store is just awful. It is like it's just an awful way know, to distribute. I, I sit there um, and I have a program that lets me uh, block a lot of the IPs that Microsoft uses for, for like, not necessarily, not spying on you, but spying on you, right? Um, yeah. And so it disables the Windows Store. So every, <laughs> like, every, like, once a month, because it blocks all those IPs, right? So, like, once a month, what I'll do is, is I'll unblock those IPs, I'll update the Netflix app, and I'll update my... Because the only thing I use, the only thing from the Windows Store I use is the Netflix app, because I want to watch my Netflix in the highest quality I can, and that is the yeah. best way to do it. And I, I like to play Solitaire. So I will, I will sit here, and I have the Microsoft Solitaire collection. So once a month, I'll unblock the URL, I'll unblock those IPs, let everything update, and then reblock them. Yeah, that's sad that you have to go through that. But well, like you I know, said, I, I don't want Microsoft knowing all the shit that they know about me. Like, like I, I just, I'm not. It doesn't sit well with me that they weren't upfront about it at the beginning, like, like we talked about earlier. So, and that's the difference exactly. between Microsoft and Google. Google lets you know straight up, hey, listen, we're going to collect data on you. We're going to sell some of it. We're going to use most of it to improve the services so that we can continue collecting data on you and continuing to sell it to make money so that we can continue exactly. to offer you services. So it's like they're very upfront about it. And so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, but like I said, Sony being in the position they are where they have these exclusives uh, could really sell people on the, hey, buy our console for all of these games. And then you can play with your friends with these other games. That way you don't have to go and buy the other console. 
Right. Like, especially with big games like the next Call of Duty, if uh, which I doubt even Activision will be working on cross platform play with that, but they might surprise us. But like Fallout 76, if that went cross platform, that, that, that'd be a pretty big fucking deal. To I mean, be, yeah. yeah, everybody playing together. And we have that. It's the best on our system. Whereas Microsoft, they really the only thing they have going for you is that if you want all of their games, you can pay a little bit more per month and you have access to all of their games with their uh, yeah, store I mean, thingy. The Game Pass actually sounds like a really interesting concept because, I mean, they're, yeah. they're trying to tout it as like the Netflix of games. So that's, yeah. that's actually kind of I, – I like the idea of it. And I wish there was another – company that could do something like that at the same time though it would probably be a pain in the ass i know ea or or ea tries to do that with origin with origin access but it's like eh. yeah although they're actually really fucking cheap it's like 30 dollars a year yeah oh yeah and then uh i mean you don't get the newest games right away most of no. the time but yeah. you get them pretty soon which i don't know i had it for a month when i bought my console and i actually did use it a little bit uh, especially like they have demos and exclusive stuffs come out. And like you said, the older games are all on there. Yep. They no longer have but, free uh, games though. They no longer give out uh, games in the house with origin. Oh, that's shitty. Never yeah. They, that. they, they stopped doing that uh, like this past month or maybe the month before. I don't know. I don't have origin currently installed, so I, I couldn't say anything. Oh no, I'm sorry. Um, uh, whatever their EA universe or whatever is what I'm thinking of. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I had a, I don't know. It was something on the Xbox One where I had access to a bunch of EA products, oh, okay. uh, demos, and even full games for free. Well, not free. It was like thirty bucks a month, but I had a month for free. But uh, yeah, I mean, that Microsoft's that that's a pretty awesome service. Did you hear? Um, and I, I only saw it once, and then I haven't seen the article again. But I'm I was interested in it. Microsoft or somebody getting with some retailer that they are going to essentially sell Xbox One S's and One X's with uh, Xbox Live and um, Game Pass mm. for a monthly rate. Yeah, yeah. you paid off the console. Did you talk to, about that? No, we have not talked about that. But yeah, I, I did he, I did hear about that. Which, yeah, I, yeah, I was like, it's like a uh, sort of financing type deal. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you end up paying a little bit less than the cost uh, of the console, which is interesting. It's not a huge amount. It's only like 15 or $20 for the Xbox One X. Right. But, I mean, if you're looking for a console and you're kind of uh, short on cash, I mean, fuck. There you go. And you have Xbox Live and Game Pass. You don't got to spend the extra money on games. Which sounds kind of neat. Um, of course, yeah. if you don't have an internet connection, I guess that doesn't matter. But Yeah, no. That's pointless anyway. But... Uh, I, I don't know. I honestly, like, I saw that and was like, hey, that'd be an easy way to get a 4K Blu-ray player. Yeah, no, because, uh, I mean, that, that's something I've thought about. I've thought about adding to my, my little setup is, is that. Yeah. But I'm, like, I'm, I'm cheap and lazy. Yeah, I want one. I, I, I But I didn't buy any of my newer movies in 4K. And I'm kind of hesitant to go and buy that and then be going and getting movies in 4K. Yeah, they're unless like... Unless I was streaming them or downloading them, because they are hella expensive. Yeah, see, that, that that's really about the only thing that, that keeps me from, from doing that. Um, from buying a 4K Blu-ray player, it's the fact that I can, I can stream in 4K just fine. Yeah. So, and I'm willing to spend the extra bit of money for 4K movies when I have it, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 tempting though. Uh, I I just I like having the physical disc for movies. Yeah, no, games, I could, I'm kind of over that. I'm kind of I I completely understand. Yeah, see, Steam did that to games. Steam did that to games, yep. man. When you can sit there and like like right now with my with my laptop, I could download half my library and not even think about it. Yeah, yeah. and have that them Steam at the and, ready. Uh, Steam and with consoles, it was really the switch. Like I did a little bit with the Xbox One, but that terabyte terabyte hard drive is always full. Yeah. I have to delete something every time I want something new, even like a free, uh, the free monthly games, which are usually older and smaller. I've got to delete stuff to make room for if right. I want to download a goddamn man. Even updates to games and downloadable content. That's a shame uh, that you filled up a one stuff. terabyte drive that quick. Oh my God. Well, cause some of those games, 50 gigs, I, uh, I deleted the call of duty, um, what was it? The I, I I broke down and bought the Modern Warfare Three, Modern Warfare no Modern Warfare Two, multiplayer 
I mean, I would, uh, I would, I would totally buy a, a mod. Like if they release Modern Warfare Three in a remastered state, I'd, I'd probably buy that. That was my first real Call of yeah. Duty, and I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, I bought the Modern Warfare Two standalone, um, which has the main game and multiplayer. Right. And uh, like I, all the shittiness aside of that, I love that game. So I was like, fuck it. I think it was like thirty five bucks, forty bucks. I bought it. Um, I just deleted it the other day so I could download DLC for um, The Witcher Three. No, no, it was. It's, I don't have that on the Xbox. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, no, for um, Far Cry Five, right? The, the Zombies Pack, and then these other whatever DLCs, right? Uh, which uh, so I deleted that and uh, noticed how big it was when I deleted it. It was something like forty gigs. <laughs> for a game like 10 years old yeah right like geez man i was like oh my god i get it's an hd upgrade but seriously you can get it any smaller than that no apparently not man i was like i don't i don't remember how big it was at the time that just seemed fucking excessive right uh but yeah free that freed up a lot of fucking space <laughs> man i'm really hoping this is recording right because <laughs> if not oh, i'm going to be really upset oh, that would be annoying I don't know where these brand game the whole goddamn time. So. I I don't know where these random uh, random spikes and you know the encoders overloaded. But how you're using less than half my CPU? I don't know. We're hitting about an hour though, so I should, we should probably wind it down because I'm not sure how yeah. much space we have left on the host. Oh wait, never mind. Oh, it just reset. Good. We're good. Oh okay, good. Yeah, no, it's Yay. September first now. It just reset. Yay! Yay! Host reset. Yay! Can All right, guys. Speed? I think we're gonna yep. we're gonna go ahead and just cut it off there. I don't know what we talked about, but it was fun. Yeah, a lot of things. And this fishing game is awesome. You should buy it. <laughs> I I might because it's on sale until payday, so I might grab it before it goes off sale. But even if it doesn't, it's only Definitely twenty bucks. Will. Yeah, exactly. For twenty bucks, I'm like, yeah, I could do this. Could hey, you know what? We need to play. We need to play Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Oh yeah. Oh, well, the multiplayer's meh. See if there's anybody on it. But yeah, I it's love that. Meh. Game. I mean, I'm sure we can round up a few games. people with it being free. That's true. So, if only it had cross platform. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, um, nowadays. I think I, I think I could round up enough people to play it on PC. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I'm down. So yeah, that's uh, basically the signal boost for that too. Yeah. Go get that game if you don't have it. I've talked about it a lot on this podcast. Yep. If you um, don't want to play it multiplayer, the single player is still fucking amazingly fun. And it's free until, I believe, the 14th or 15th. So it's on Humble yeah. Bundle. Go get it. Yay. Yeah, and it's hard to beat free. Yeah, no, I mean... Fish it, it, premature strike. It's 30 bucks though, without without that. So it's not, like, too expensive. Yeah. No, it's not too expensive anyway. Even if you want to pay for the game, buy it. Maybe uh, Relic, if Relic still exists, they'll uh, make another one. Hey, I've we can only hope. For one. Yeah, yeah. Since Dawn of War 3 was such a fucking letdown. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. We also need to play <laughs> Vermintide. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, guys. For the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. Peace out. Fish on. Fuck yeah. <laughs>